Okay, so next question comes in. This is a common one from the critics. And it is, I would say, one of their favorite lines of evidence for large-scale evolution, universal common ancestry. And so the question is, what is your favorite response to evolutionists who argue the ordering in the fossil record is a representative of evolutionary history, right? Where you've got more simple organisms in, in your lower layers up to fish, amphibians, reptiles, mammals, and humans basically on, on your uh, highest layers, Dan. Yeah, yeah. So I'll be real honest here. I struggled with that question for years. I bought lots of books about it. In fact, um, if uh, whoever wrote that, if you want to send me an email to dan at genesisapologetics.com, I'll send you the book that I would re, uh, refer to that when I just, the, the name escapes me right now, but I'd be happy to refer that book. I drilled into this a lot and I found an extremely satisfying answer. The theory of the broadly painting is from creationists is that the animals were buried um, according to their habitat, according to their region, according to their elevation, and according to their body mass, density, and intelligence. There's a lot of factors mixed in there, right? But obviously, if the fountains of the great deep, not the fountains on the land, but the fountains of the great deep happened first, you've got to take all the trilobites and everything that's on the ocean floor that doesn't have the ability to swim, that has to, by logic, be the very bottom most layers. And that's exactly what we see. We see all those bottom dwellers, they're gone, they're buried, and they're their deepest in the fossil record, which is exactly what we would expect. And then you go on up and then you have mammals and finally man. There's a... a um, a video that we just made a few months ago called why don't we find humans in uh, buried with dinosaurs that goes into this fossil layer record uh for 20 30 minutes and it goes deep into this this subject answering the question yeah why don't we typically find humans buried right next to a t-rex but if you just look at what's going to happen during the flood and you map out the flood process and its different sequences you're going to see the underwater stuff's going to buy it first. They're going to get buried. They have no hope and they can't go anywhere. So mobility is one of the burial factors that I talked about. Mobility, density, and intelligence. So all that stuff goes first. What's going next? Well, shallow seas. They're all going to go next. And then what next? Swamplands like the Jurassic and the Jurassic layers. They're going to get it next. What's going to be the very, very top? The things that can run and the things that are smart and light and can travel. You know, remember, if, if the flood was, it didn't happen overnight, it was 150 days from the commencement of the flood all the way over to the zenith of the flood, 150 day process. If you're human, or, or if you're a, a, a cougar or a lion or a bear or a dog, and you you've see the marshlands getting wiped out, you see tsunamis coming in, and you're mobile and you can travel 20 miles a day, where are you going? <laughs> the high hills. You're going to bury it last, but even, even more explanatory, you're not going to be buried at all. What's going to happen to the creatures that can go higher? They're going to float, bloat, and drown. So they're going to drown, then they're going to float and bloat, and then what's going to happen to the body parts? They're just going to disintegrate and float down to the bottom and not even be buried, or they're going to be buried offshore with what's called the Tejas runoff. So I would say that the the order of fossil burial is when you really drill into it, it looks scary at first, like, oh my gosh, they've got this order or order of progression. It looks like it fits vertical evolution. Looks like they, they've got me cornered. But to the scholar, when you drig, dig into the fossil data yourself, go to PaleoDB and start tracking it out and looking at it and look at some of these books I can refer you to, you'll come away overwhelmingly convinced, oh my gosh, the flood best describes the order of burial. It has nothing to do with vertical evolution. So that's another answer that I think takes some while a while to look into. It's not a it's not a quick answer, but I think the order of burial in the fossil record sides with us and supports our case more than evolution. And again, send me an email. I'll be happy to refer you to that um, that book. I think it was by Dwayne Gish, but uh, I'll I'll look it up and and send it on to whoever's curious about it. Hey, Amen. Well said, Doctor Dan. Have you heard of the Ashley phosphate beds? Is it in North or South Carolina? No, I haven't heard of those. Uh -uh. There, I mean, they. I guess there is a record of finding human and dinosaur bones uh, remains together in the big death burial bed. It's miles long. 
Which Amazing. Would send, send me an email on that. I'd love to see it. Please yeah, do. Okay. okay. It's called the Ashley Phosphate Beds. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Thanks. I'll, I'll uh, send me a note on that. I'd love to look it up. Okay. Great. And Dan, I, I love your answer. I completely agree. You know, basically the order of the fossils is the burial order of the flood in terms of communities, habitats. And so if the flood with the fountains of the yeah. great deep started in the ocean, you'd have marine creatures being buried on the continents, followed by your land creatures. And, you know, your your uh, humans basically would represent uh, post-flood humans. But excellent answer. I appreciate you taking <laughs> uh, what could be a long answer and, and condensing it into yeah. a, a great explanation.